this hurts me. It hurts me. Um, man. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. And, and I go back to that recap I made. And I think, like, just when Wolves fans start to get comfortable, this is what happens, right? Um, Mavs are a good team. They're a good team. Um, I'm going to talk in circles for a bit. I don't really have an agenda for this video. A um, lot of talk going around. That was two phenomenal games of basketball we just watched. Obviously, the second of which just ended. Um, but neither went the way, you know, Minnesota was hoping for. Uh, there's, like, a lot of obvious things I can say. Um, I mean, starting of which, like, you just need better from your two best offensive players if you're Minnesota. You can't afford 6-for-20 from Cat in Game 1, 6-for-16 from Ant in Game 1, followed by two worst performances from both of them, 4-for-16, and then I don't know what Ant finished. But um, both games, you have your role players stepping up. Jane McDaniels, Game 1, arguably his best game of the season. Nas Reed, Game 2, best game of the season. Mike Conley, Game 2, dang good game. Uh, Pre-series recap, I talk, it's easy to talk about Luke and Kyrie. The, the talk about... Luke and Kyrie is going to be at their game too. But I talked a lot about, you know, Mavs role players. And the Timberwolves, for the most part, have limited the Mavs role players. And and looking at, you know, the box score from tonight, uh, which I'm going to pull up right now. <laughs> um, sorry for not being more prepared. Um, PJ Washington, 0 for 4 from 3. Derek Jones Jr., 0 for 3 from 3. Luka, 10 for 23. Obviously, Made the ones that mattered. Um, Kyrie completely shut down during the first half. He started to turn it on in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter. But for the most part, if you're limiting Kyrie to 7 for 16, 20 points, it's a good result. Tim Hardaway Jr., 0 points. Um, Dante Axum didn't do anything. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. Um, what What can I cover? What can I say? Right? So. Um, game one, I'm, I'm talking to my boys and a lot of people are like, you know, I can't believe we sold that. And I'm like, respectfully, like I get, I get where you're coming from, but I mean, was the biggest lead the Wolves had in like the whole second half, like four points, like when they were up like 103, 99 at the end or 106, 102 after Ant hit that pull up three on the left wing. Um, like to me, we lost a close game. It sucks, but it's, it's not exactly like a sell. And you can call it a sell, but like teams are teams lose close games. A sell is what the Pacers did to the Celtics in game one, right? A sell is not to me what the T Wolves did in game one. Tonight was a sell. You're up 20 points day near going into the half, like right before the half. The Mavs get a little momentum at the end of the second quarter. And something I want to emphasize is it's so important how you finish these quarters. Like when I look at, you know, um, one of my favorite games in T-Wolves history. Kind of, it's, a, it's a legendary Pat Bev on the bleachers pounding his chest. The T-Wolves finished every quarter of that game hitting a three right before the buzzer. Or not every quarter, but two big threes at the end of the third quarter and first quarter. And it's those points that come at the end of the quarter that really matter. When you look at this series, game one, the stupid ant turnover, throwing it over Conley's head, followed by um, when there was no shot clock left followed by Kyrie getting an and one. That's three points for the Mavs. How many points did the Mavs win by? I think it was, I think it was three. I hope you don't, it was, it was, it was one possession. It was three or two or something, right? Tonight, end of quarter two, Mavs went like what? It cut from like 40 to 60 to 48 to 60, something like that. Closing quarters matters a ton. Um, Ant, my boys from UCLA, everyone's flooding my phone. Man, and so overrated, you know. Um, Dan, the hype went too far. I kind of agree. And something you see me talk a lot about a lot, if you follow me on Twitter or if you um, even listen to me talk on this channel, is I talk a lot about how everyone wants to talk about Ant. The team around him is really good. Ant is really good too. I'm not sitting here overreacting two games. I've stayed steady on Ant all year. Great player, phenomenal player. If we're talking who you want to build your around, team you know, young players under, I don't know what the age cap is, but like, let's just say 26. You got Luca one, and then it's probably Ant or Wemby two. You probably have to go with Wemby, but 
and Ant slides in at three at the very least, right? Like, but I've never tried to push him as to being like two or one, especially not one. I've, I've always said between Luke and Ant, like Ant just has a long way to go to reach what Luca is offensively. I've never tried to push that narrative. I've never even tried to push that Ant's better than SGA, right? So for me, like, most of the Ant overhype stuff is going on from like media people or people that see like his aura, right? Because he's the number one aura in the league, right? Um, casual viewers. He's a fun personality. He's a great player. He, I mean, he is he is box office, right? But on the court, the series is shown. Still has growth to do. And even when you look at the last three games in the Nuggets series, incredible game six, bad shooting game seven. He did what he needed to to win. I gave him his props in the recap video. But that turnover down the stretch, like I saw that and I was fuming because you just cannot afford to be dancing there on Derek Lively and then just throw it without looking. Nods Reed had moved. It's a very bad turnover. It's an unacceptable turnover. And when you look at the next step in Ant's game, it's becoming, you know, can he take the leap in in terms of playmaking, right? If you look at what separates Luke and Ant, like Ant's better on the defensive end overall probably, even though Lucas had a good defensive playoffs. But you look at what separates them, and I'd say number one on the list is probably playmaking. I think there's a couple more things. Luca has a more refined post game. He's stronger. He's overall a better scorer, I would say. But the number one thing is playmaking. And it's it's tough to just get those those chops. Like, I think every elite player in the league who's in a – I mean, every elite playmaker in the league kind of came in with that reputation. Like, what elite playmaker in the league – did not come in being a very good passer and a, and a very good guy to set people up. Like Trey Young's always been that. Luca's always been that. CP three's always been that. James Harden's always at uh, James Harden. Actually, you can kind of argue, but that might have been because of increased role, right? Um, LeBron, Luca, Jokic, all these guys kind of came in. You you knew they were great passers, and Ant that was never really his game, and that's fine. You can be an all time great without being a great passer. Um, you look at Kobe, right? Uh, but obviously Ant has growth to do. He's, he's 22. Like I, you can criticize him. I think some people are going too far, right? And obviously when you talk as much as he does and when you, when you, uh, how do I put it? When you, you know, are as outspoken as he is, you open yourself to being criticized. Like it's, it's fair. Um, just like, it, there's just a little frustration from mine because I just feel like everyone is, is being so reactionary and it's hard to not be in the playoffs, um, series is not over. Series is not over. It's obviously looking bleak. The Mavs just took two on the road. And like I said, they're a good team. They're a dang good team. Um, but it really comes down to, you know, you just ultimately lost two games that you were able to win, right? Lost two games by a combined margin of what? Three, four points. Uh, it sucks, but how can you respond? It's, it's all about how will you respond? Um, we saw the Nuggets championship level you know, response came out game three after losing two at home one. Now, obviously we know the end of that series, but the wall is the first step in the series. It's taking it back in Dallas. It's taking it back in Dallas. Um, Carl Anthony Towns, got to talk about him. I've been a long time cat defender. I talked a lot in the last video about how I've been with the walls since the dark ages, right? And, you know, even though I, I mentioned how I've been watching since 2012, I didn't become like a, a real, you know, we can call super fan until 2018, Jimmy Butler era, 2019, 2020. That 2019 through 2021 stretch, when it was Jeff Teague, Wiggins, Todd Gibson, Cat. Cat was all we had. He was so good. And like, then I, I always said, to me, he's one of the most underrated players in the league. There's not a lot of guys who can do what he does on offense. The best three-point shooting big ever. Does he have his limitations? Yes. Does he have his foul trouble issues? Emotional maturity, defense. Yes. But he's great. Up until this point in the playoff run, phenomenal. He has been, you know, game seven MVP. Many said uh, T Wolves Nugget series, great in the Sun series. Very good defense on Jokic. But you see in this series some of the issues we have in this game. And, and even watching the first quarter tonight, you're already seeing him take these. I got I got to reenact it. You already see him taking these like one leg, you know, shots. Like, and it's like, you're 
you're seven foot, right? One of the most skilled bigs we've ever seen. And you're settling on PJ Washington. Good defender. PJ Washington's a good defender, don't get me wrong, but a guy giving you a lot of size. PJ Washington is what, six nine max? He's undersized on you. And you're settling. You're settling. And he didn't, I don't think he made any of those shots. He shot four for 16. He didn't play at all under down the stretch. Got into foul trouble. The second foul that was called on him, like, it was a flop by Luca, but you still can't afford to get two fouls four minutes into the game. Um, and I, within this, I have to shout out Nas Reed, right? So, so Cat needs to be better. But, like, I'm just speaking the obvious. I mean, like, I, I don't really know what to say about that. He played bad. Him and Ant, you know, your two offense players, you need them to be, bad, be better. And this goes back to game one. I never like when people do this. Like, after the game, a bunch of Wolves fans are saying, oh, I'm not worried at all. You know, you're not going to see Ant and Cat have two more bad games like this or have a bad game like this again. And to me, that's always just like, a, to me, it's always just like a stupid thing to say. Respectfully, like very respectfully. Because first of all, we just saw it happen, right? But second of all, you can always play this game. Dallas fans are saying the Wolves aren't going to make 18 threes again, right? You can always look at a game and say, oh, this isn't going to happen again. This isn't going to happen again. But Sometimes it happens again, and even if not, like, every team can point to something on the other end, right? I never like getting into those arguments, because we just saw tonight Anton Cat had another bad game again. But we also saw tonight the Wolves nearly won despite it again, right? So does that automatically mean the Wolves are going to win the next four games because Ant and Cat are going to play better? No, it doesn't, because things change game to game, right? Um, Nas Reed. Phenomenal. He made so many big threes for us. I mean, he made seven, right? Or eight. I think he finished with eight. The last one rims out. It sucks. It sucks. Um, Alexander Walker, I, I want to give a full disclaimer. I should have said this earlier in the video at some point, but I missed some of the third quarter because I had to get dinner with my boy. Um, I heard some people complaining about Alexander Walker, but I also saw he finished the third or early fourth made two buckets. He's overall been a little underwhelming. Like, I think the appeal of Alexander Walker has always been you have a defensive wing who's a great defender and can kind of do everything offensively without specializing. And recently it's just kind of became, he just seems to jack up threes, like nearly every time he touches the ball. Slight exaggeration, but like, I don't mind cutting some of his minutes, but you need him to guard Kyrie and Luka. So I get it. Um, McDaniel's bad game from him. I'm not really going to, knock on him all that much because I think he's he's doing a thing he also had a great last three games um so obviously you know you hope you get more than one for six shooting from him but it was okay Gobert a lot of talk about that last defensive possession they're like I think it's more of a coaching thing and, and you just saw the possession before he gets switched on to Luka forces Luka into a tough fall away mid-range he misses a shot. I've never been the biggest Gobert defender or anything. I'm pretty neutral towards towards Rudy Gobert, but um, definitely sucks to see him get shaken like that at the end. Um, but yeah, uh, and here let me talk about the Mavs a bit before I before I end this recap. Um, first of all, let me start by saying I've been kind of like all season saying like to me. The Nuggets are the best team in the West. The Mavs and Wolves are two and three. Now, obviously, the Nuggets are out of the playoffs. So if you want to call me wrong for that, you can call me wrong. But I picked the Mavs over to Thunder. I picked the Mavs over to Clippers. I've always said this team is very good. And why do I think they're very good? It's mostly because number 77. And this playoffs has made me feel interested because it's weird. Luka, this playoffs, as someone who's watched every playoff series of Luca, Luca's career. I've watched every series, not every game, but I've, I've watched every series in great detail. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the league. Obviously right now I'm rooting hard against him. He's a killer, right? But this playoffs is the worst he's played by a decent chunk. And even these two games, you look at the stats, 33, 12, and 10. I'm not going to sit up here and hate on him. That's a, that's a hater thing to do. Was he amazing this game? He was good in the first quarter. He was bad in the second quarter. He made the big shot that counted in the fourth. He obviously, to me, is a top two player in the league. So, I'm, I, once again, I'm not trying to hate on him. But it's just like, it's, and this is what I get back to. People are just super reactionary and people only think about wins and losses. And at the end of the day, it does come down to, does your team win? But this is Luka's worst playoff run of his career. Statistically, 
eye test, shooting, everything. It's the worst playoff run of his career. But the discourse around him is probably the most positive since he beat the first seed Phoenix 64 win team, which he deserves loads of credit for. Um, and I, I don't know. It's just interesting to me. Hits a big shot on Rudy. As soon as you saw him get that much separation, you had a feeling it was going down. I would have liked to see Rudy, like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to say, like, hindsight's twenty twenty. I would have liked to see him try not to give up the three. I feel like Luca was, you know, as the commentator was saying, I think it was Reggie Miller was saying, like, they're going to go for the kill here. They're going to go for the win on the road. I would have liked to see him try to take what you – you knew that Luca was going to look for that step back three. And weirdly enough, there's this stat saying that Luca almost always steps back to his left and shoots it. And here he kind of, like, I don't know what exactly it was. I haven't rewatched it. I don't want to rewatch it. But it was some kind of weird, like, sidestep, sidestep to his right. Which is why, like, when Luca sidesteps to his left, it's just immediate trigger, right? When he sidesteps to his right, he took, like, a nice little pause, set, shot goes up. And I'm tearing up, right? Because this is, again, you, I think the max lead was 18. I'm not completely sure, but an 18-point lead and you let it go. Um, limited Kyrie. Limited almost all the role players. Jaden Hardy hit some nice shots, but you can live with seven points from Jaden Hardy, right? Derek Lively had a good game, six for six. But Derek Lively is going to have six for six games, right? You overall limit their team. Kyrie is mostly limited. He did turn it up late, but you're not going to get many worse games from Kyrie. Luka was very good, but even him, like, it wasn't like he had a complete killer of a game, right? And you lose. So, from like, this is what I go back to earlier about the whole, like, you know, Ant and Cat aren't going to play this bad again. Well, dude, I mean, defensively, like, we limited them pretty well, and we lost. It sucks. Series is not over, but it's looking bleak, right? Um, you just gotta, you just gotta take it game by game. Game three, big one in Dallas, have to have it. Obviously, this is season on the line. Twice we've seen the Timberwolves season on the line play some excellent ball and respond to the adversity very impressively. They have to do it one more time. Uh, or no, not only one more time, but at least two more times. Because realistically, you got to take both in Dallas for this to be a series. Um, start with game three, though. Start with game three. Uh, I talked in circles a little bit. Um, overall points. Ant definitely was getting like a little gas, but I'm not crazy overreacting to two games. Um, he needs to play better. He will play better. Cat needs to play better. Will play better. Um, Good game from Mike Conley. Good bounce back from him. Great game from Nas Reed. But you, once again, like I said about McDaniels, you can't expect another Nas Reed game like this. So it's, it's going to have to come down to the stars. Um, credit to Dallas, but able to win two close games on the road. They're over the moon. Um, big shot from Luka. Killer. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know what else to say. It sucks. Like, I... This this game, like, I was on a call with my boy Liam. Shout out to him during the second quarter. And he's like, I never like talking too much. I've seen too many, you know. He, Liam's more of a casual fan, but he's like, I, I know how Minnesota sports goes. And at that point in my head, just seeing the way the game's going, I'm going to be honest, I thought it was over. We're up 18. We're at home. Everything's clicking. Dallas, as of recently, I, I don't think I've seen them. I mean, they've made some almost comebacks. Once against the Clippers. Was it tw twice against the Clippers, I think. Um. They had that big one in game four against the Clippers where they were, like, down 31, and they they took the lead at some point in that game. So they, they're capable of coming back, but I'm just like, Minnesota, I haven't seen them blow a big lead recently. I think we got this. And, like, that was why I was I was cool going out to dinner. If it was a close game, I would have said it, but I'm like, I'm just going to grab some dinner. You know, I'm chilling, chill. Then it's third quarter. All of a sudden, it's tied up. 86-79 in the fourth. Kyrie goes on, two hits two big threes. We're down all of a sudden. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'll probably cut it here because I'm starting to just, you know, be a little depressing. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. If you're a Timberwolves fan, if you're a neutral observer, what you think, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I didn't really have any crazy takes in this video. It's just kind of me talking. I'm sick to my stomach, right? It sucks. Um, let me know your prediction for the rest of the series. Leave a like, subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you later.